Hello, this is a video where I've definitely covered the subjects in it before but I want to go over the bits people get wrong in this subject or have questions about and so this video we're just going to simply look at in what scenarios would you not want to use a mask like this and would you instead want to use a sort of, not a rebreather but an SCBA system or a scuba system but an air supplied respirator basically, a self contained breathing apparatus but one that supplies the air rather than actually um, you know, recycling air or using a filter. The reason being is that some people seem to be quite confused at which, you know, areas you might need to use supplied air rather than relying on a filter. So, we'll get the obvious one out of the way with just the first. If there's no oxygen in the air, you can't use a filter to filter that non-oxygen. So, what you need is obviously an oxygen tank with all the regulators and everything on going into a mask. The reason is that supplies you with air and that air is clean. Obviously, a thing to point out is that you don't need a filter with um, a supplied air system because fresh, clean, breathable air is being pumped into the mask from your oxygen tank. That creates a positive pressure seal, which means you can breathe normally of that. When you exhale, it leaves the valves as normal. But also, the positive pressure system means that the actual mask itself is obviously not going to be compromised because with a mask like this, they operate on negative pressure. So when you've got the mask on, you have to breathe in and breathe out and you have to have the mask tight to your face because if not when you breathe in air follows a path of least resistance and not all the air will go through the filter if there's a little gap some of the air will come in so contaminated air gets in the mask if you have a positive pressure system on your mask what actually happens will be that the positive pressure uh, so the pressure is higher in the mask than outside if there's a little gap the air is constantly pushing out of there so poison air or whatever can't get in. So, in a situation where there might not be oxygen, then in that sort of situation you definitely want a mask which is um, positive pressure and supplied obviously with an air tank, an air supplied respirator. So that's the most obvious one. If there's no oxygen you obviously need to have supplied air because you can't filter air that doesn't exist. The second reason I think is if you don't know what's in the air. Now, most military units, when they have respirators, just have the simple CBRN kind of canisters, which are like the ABEC P3 type ones. They don't filter every type of gas known to man, but they filter the majority that would be used in chemical warfare. However, let's say you know that there's a gas somewhere, but you don't know what it is, and you're taking the max maximum risks, sort of, you know, precautions possible against those risks. That's where you'd kind of want supplied air, because you know whatever's there, as long as you've got fresh air being supplied from an oxygen tank on your back or whatever, you are going to be okay. Whereas you don't know for certain that your filter is going to block everything. So that's one of those situations where obviously supplied air is better, similar to no oxygen. If you don't know what's there, and you know one thing gives you a 100% survival chance, and one thing gives you 90 odd percent survival chance, you'd go with the 100% one. And there's a few other things as well that are a bit more minor, but for example, if you um, are having one of these things on, like obviously the reason firefighters or firemen use these as well, is if there's a house fire, there's a, both a lack of oxygen from the fire using oxygen as a fuel, lots of carbon monoxide and things like that. As I've said before, if you're in a situation where there's a fire and smoke and lots of horrible stuff, it's far better to have a gas mask or a respirator on with a filter than it is to have nothing on. But it is not a substitute for um, an air supplied respirator because most filters can only block carbon monoxide in very small amounts in a well ventilated area. Or especially the ones that are designed to do that. For the most part, when it comes to carbon monoxide, you actually need a air supplied respirator on or a rebreather. So for firefighters, Obviously, if they're going into a burning building, they use the thing that's going to be the best for them, which is an air-supplied respirator and not a filter respirator. I have some pictures of firefighters in various places actually using filters, because I guess in certain circumstances they could use a regular respirator with a filter and that would work fine. So I guess in those situations, sometimes they opt to do that. But for the most part, firefighters use obviously an oxygen tank because you want to have a supplied amount of air coming in that's safe. So, there was a couple of other minor things, and as I was saying, because it's positive pressure, if you're working in an environment for a very long period of time, which might be dangerous, obviously air supplied is better, because as long as your air doesn't run out, or your oxygen doesn't run out coming into the mask or whatever, then that would work well. 
because obviously, as I said before, contam contaminants can't get in because you're using a system like that. It also means the straps and everything else don't have to be as tight, so it's more comfortable. If you're operating for longer periods of time, uh, provided that you can obviously get the oxygen constantly coming in, air supplied is always the way to go. Another thing I haven't mentioned before is hazmat suits. Now, people ask me, have I got any hazmat suits? No, I don't. The difference between NBC suits and hazmat suits is a lot, you know, in the sense everybody thinks about them is that a hazmat suit is like the big bulky one and they're normally um, positive pressure. How they normally work is if you've ever seen a film or whatever where somebody has a hazmat suit on there's a big chunky bit there like they're a hunchback, right? That's where the oxygen tank sits and what it does is that's constantly releasing air into the suit and the suit has a little exhale valve on it basically so the suits always look inflated because what happens is that oxygen tank is keeping the suit inflated and then the positive pressure means over time that air is very slowly coming out. It's basically going out at the same rate it's pumping into the suit. So the suit is positive pressure. So you don't actually need a gas mask on underneath a um, hazmat suit. Although I have seen pictures, you know, when there's very dodgy stuff going on where people have the hazmat suit on, obviously being positive pressure, and then they've got a respirator with a filter on underneath. The reason is, I guess, just double layer of protection. It's like wearing two condoms or something. But, um, not that that's actually a good idea, don't do that, just use the one. Um, but, you know, that's the point of doing it, it's an extra layer of protection. So, you do that for that reason as well. So if you were w wondering about why hazmat suits are like that, it's because they're positive pressure. NBC suits are just like waterproof airtight clothes for the most part, that, you know, you strap up all around your body, and then the only way air is coming in and out of you is your mask of your filter on, or your mask of your oxygen tank on. But, Obviously, a hazmat suit is a higher level of protection, but it's bulkier and needs an oxygen tank. Now, in lots of labs and things where people might work with really harmful stuff all day, what they normally have is like an airline that's attached to um, sort of part of the equipment or whatever. And how that works is air is pumped in from somewhere where it's definitely clean and safe and then sent in. So they don't have to rely on oxygen tanks. They've actually got an airline going from the mask or their hazmat suit that's constantly plugged up to somewhere. You may have seen that in films and documentaries when there's people working in a lab, they walk through and every now and again they just plug their cable into the nearest place. And as long as you don't go too long without um, you know, plugging your suit in or your mask in, you will still have a uh, positive pressure set up. So hopefully that's done a bit more in this video to explain to you the times when you might actually need to use a positive pressure um, sort of air supplied system and not use your conventional good old mask and a filter.